Let me talk about inferencing. So now we've created this network and it's taken hours and hours of deep learning training on DGX1 or in, in the Amazon cloud or in the Azure cloud with all these GPUs. Now that you have this network, this network can, is now ready to be deployed. And that network is still very computationally intensive and we need to figure out a way to make that network run as fast as possible. There are two things that we are doing with Volta that is really, really special. The first, of course, is the Tensor Core that I mentioned earlier. It increases the throughput of training by a factor of 12, but it increases the throughput of inferencing by a factor of six, and I'm gonna show you the benefit of that. But the second thing is this. Whereas the frameworks are used for training the network, when you're done with it, it creates a graph, and that graph needs to be optimized and compiled for the processor that you're using. We call that Tensor RT. Tensor is basically a mathematical object. It's like a vector. It's a generalized vector containing a lot of multidimensional objects within it. And this tensor is, needs to run in real time. And it, it comes, into the, comes, into our, comes into our software in the form of graphs. And so the first thing that we have to do is we have to interpret from each one of the frameworks, parse the, and, and uh, in, ingest from each one of the frameworks. The second thing we have to do is compile it, and the third, optimize it for each one of the targets. And each one of our GPUs has slightly different architectures. They have slightly different numerics precision, and we have to take advantage of each one of our GPUs. We call it Tensor RT, Tensor Runtime, Tensor RT, Graph Optimization for Vertical and, and Horizontal Layer Fusion. So if you take a look at this, this is basically a neural network. There's the convolution layer, the bias layer, the, the, the rectified linear unit layer, and um, basically the activation layer. And this is one particular network that a typical network, this I believe is AlexNet. What we do with it, the first thing that we do, we combine the mathematics that otherwise would have to be done in sequence into one big blob. And so we turned a, a ReLU, a bias, and a one by one convolution into a one by one convolution bias ReLU. And so that mathematical block um, is replaced. So by analyzing the graph, we could figure out where, which one of the mathematical operations we could fuse together and replace with something much more efficient. The second thing we could do is we could recognize when different mathematical blocks share uh, the same inputs. They have different outputs, but they share the same inputs. And that, again, is achieved through graph analytics. So we can, we can walk through the graph, we can analyze the graph and recognize these different, different opportunities and simply remove them, okay, in this particular case and share them. And then the third thing, of course, is compile it down to the precision of, of, um, of, uh, of the target GPU. Now, this is, an ex this is the inferencing performance. Let me show you. Broadwell, this is the fastest CPU uh, of today. Skylake is the next generation CPU. We haven't had a chance to benchmark it yet, and so we're giving it the credit, the full credit of what's possible. K80 is the GPU that we announced five years ago, okay? And the, 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 the y-axis is images per second, how quickly it can do inferences in one second. Now, P100 is able to do 600 images per second. There are two important numbers. Not only is the throughput important, but the latency, how long it took you to do it. Not how many you can do, but how long it took you to do it. The latency is equally important, and the reason for that is because if you were talking to a neural net, if you were talking to Cortana, and you asked Cortana the question, you would like it to respond very quickly in just a few milliseconds, in just a few milliseconds. And so the number of people who could speak to Cortana at the same time in the cloud is important because that has something to do with the capacity of the data center and the cost of the data center. The second thing is the latency of that performance is equally important, if not more important, and the reason for that is because that has something to do with the quality of service, okay? And so the purple line is latency, the green line is throughput. So P100, has the benefit of 600 images per second, and Skylake is about 300, the next generation Skylake, and both of them could do it in about 10 milliseconds. This is what Volta looks like. That is what we call a little bit faster. And so Volta is really groundbreaking work. Not only is Volta incredibly good at training, it is also incredibly good at inferencing for the very first time. We've not focused on inferencing in the past. And the reason for that is because 
the number of, pub, the number of networks that are being created was still ra rather limited. But now, internet server, service providers and cloud service providers and startup companies and enterprises all over the world are starting to move deep learning into production. They need an inferencing pipeline. And so Volta, TensorRT, ideal for inferencing. The way that we deploy it into a server is also unique. And the reason for that is because these scale-out servers, gosh. Sandy, why do you keep standing over there? <laughs> why do I keep going over there? <laughs> Sandy, uh, stage manager, she's fantastic. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Tesla for hyperscale scale out. Look how small it is. Look at this thing. It's like a CD case, but more beautiful. And it's gold. It might actually be real gold. OK, so Tesla V100. And th this is what we call the PCI Express FHHL, the sexiest name ever. Full height, half length. <laughs> Who does that? I couldn't rename it. It was too late. The industry took it and ran with it. Full height, half length. Try to say that without chapstick. OK, so this is, a, and not only that, it runs at 150 watts. 150 watts, 150 watts. And it fits into these commodity inferencing servers. And here's the, thank you, Sandy. This is the, this is the case I want to make. This is the reason why people are talking about accelerators for data centers. I like to make the case for accelerators. Here's how it works. And so this is what, this is what 500 nodes look like. Earlier I said 400 nodes. This is what 500 nodes looks like. 500 nodes is basically this entire row of servers. OK? It's an entire row of servers, 500 nodes. Well, basically, this 500 nodes can support 300,000 inferences per second. 300,000 7 millisecond inferences per second, which means if 300,000 people were connected into this data center and did a query or OK something or look for something, and those inference networks were activated, we could support 300,000 people in this rack. 300,000 inferences basically translates to about 1,000 CPUs. Because as you saw earlier, the state-of-the-art CPU, the one that hasn't been announced yet, is 300, 000, 300 inferences per second. And so 1,000 CPUs basically translates into two nodes, because each one of those little nodes, long nodes, has two CPUs inside. If we added all of that together at, at $3,000 per node, and remember, you have to buy the node, there's the interconnect, OK, and then there's um, all of the power that goes along with it. Power and cooling represents about 40% of a data center. But let's, let's ignore all of that for a second. And so 500, 500 nodes translates to basically a million and a half dollars, not to include all the cables and all the, the, the power delivery and the, and the cooling, et cetera. And it consumes 500, 500 watts each, so 250,000 watts, 250 kilowatts. Well, if Tesla, if we used a a relatively conservative number of about 15x reduction, that basically translates to 33 nodes of this. That translates to 33 nodes. That's the savings. Instead of 500 nodes that occupies an entire row, you can replace it with 33 nodes, or you could increase the throughput of your data center by 15 times and not have to build more data centers as AI workloads floods into hyperscale data centers. This is one of the most important reasons why people ask us about, about FPGAs and accelerators and so on and so forth. And we decided, why not make Volta the best inferencing machine that can possibly be made? And as a result, the, res the results are uh, incredible amounts of savings. OK? So Tesla Volta for inferencing. Let me show you one more thing that's really super important. We've been working on all of these stacks, and the stacks are so complicated. You got cheap 
whole bunch of GPUs, whole bunch of drivers, whole bunch of systems, whole bunch of middleware, all these different numerics, all these different frameworks, and there's so many frameworks, there's so many GPUs, there's so many versions of software, the ability for the industry to maintain all of this complicated stack of software, arguably the most complex stack of software the world's seen, ever seen, is really, really, really difficult. And in fact, when you read the forums, it is such a pain. And for many deep learning engineers, it takes anywhere from a solid day to a couple of weeks to sometimes never achieving building a computer that can do deep learning. And so what we decided to do was to take this incredibly complicated stack and containerized it. We containerized it and we dedicated ourselves to containerize every single framework and every single version of software that we know. And then once we containerize it, we're gonna create a cloud registry for it. Okay, we're gonna create a cloud registry for it. We're gonna take all these containers, we're gonna create a cloud registry for it, and here's, the, here's how it works. So whenever you're ready and you would like, you have a Titan X, and you're one of the several hundred thousand deep learning engineers in the world that has Titan Xs, and you're, you bought a Titan X, you don't wanna build your own deep learning machine, you simply go to a website, type in your email address, register for this, you download the container of your choice. You download the container of your choice. That entire stack of software is fully optimized. It's fully integrated. It's containerized. It's virtualized. We download that into your machine. You start doing deep learning basically in a few minutes. There's no configuration. There's no building. There's no worrying about different versions. It's configured basically in just a few minutes. Use this a container called the MV Docker, and we create a registry for it. We support every single, every single framework. Then the next thing is, once you start using, you used to use the platform, you start to realize that, gosh, I sure would love to have a lot more performance, and nothing would give me more joy than to tap into the 10,000 GPUs that are in the cloud. With just a click, you create an instant instance up there, we download the container up there, and we burst your workload into the cloud. Okay, So this is really the first hybrid deep learning cloud computing platform. And what we provide is just a registry. We provide the registry, the cloud computing platforms provide all of the cloud computing infrastructure, and we maintain the software, optimize the software for as long as we shall live. Let's take a look at it. Phil. Yeah, so the, the NVIDIA GPU cloud provides multiple interfaces for developers and users to run deep learning. Uh, I'm going to focus today on the web application running in a browser. So we log in. And this is where you create your deep learning job. And there's just three steps. First, we select where we're going to run our, our deep learning workload. We call this the accelerated computing environment. Uh, you can pick from cloud or your own DGX1 cluster or a DGX station or a, a Titan PC. Uh, today we're going to focus on cloud. Uh, and you can see the options you have here uh, include the Microsoft Azure, uh, Amazon AWS, uh, and the NVIDIA Saturn V. This is the DGX supercomputer we built for internal development. Uh, I'm going to select uh, an 8-GPU node because I'm going to run a, a fairly heavy ResNet uh, training session. In the second step, you attach a data set or multiple data sets uh, to your job. Uh, here, I'm uh, and you get a choice between the existing data sets that you've already uploaded, uh, or you can create and upload uh, a new data set. I'm going to go with the ImageNet data set. Uh, and this particular data set has both training and validation samples in it, so I only need one data set for this run. Next, we select the framework in a container, as Jensen was just describing. All of the different frameworks are provided, fully optimized, uh, and optimized for scale out to multi GPU, so ideal for our 8 GPU run here. Uh, I'm going to take PyTorch. Um, and I'm going to take the latest release. You notice the numbered releases. We optimize, update uh, each of these frameworks every month. So at this point, my job spec is complete. I'm ready to go. But I want to notice that we echo out the command line 
that's equivalent to uh, this web application run so that a developer can copy and paste this into a script and run it from one of our other interfaces, such as our command line interface. So now I start the job, and that takes us to the dashboard. This is the control center for the NVIDIA GPU cloud. You can see jobs that are running and queued uh, and your recent history. Uh, and the list of jobs covers all of the accelerated computing environments uh, that you've been running in. Uh, and you see the job at the top is the one we just created, the, uh, the ImageNet 256. Uh, it's already running. Uh, and you can click on any job to look at telemetry. Uh, there's a job here on four GPUs uh, I started a little while ago. Uh, it's also ResNet on PyTorch. Uh, and you can see we're keeping these GPUs running uh, flat out uh, as we run this uh, training session. That's great. Thank you. Good job, Phil. And that's it. That's the GPU. That's the GPU cloud, the NVIDIA GPU cloud. And it's a containerized system. It's a registry in the cloud, supports every single framework. And the thing that we will do is we will support these frameworks and every single one of the versions and every single one of the permutations of them on every single one of our GPUs for as long as we shall live. And that's something we do for accelerated computing for each one of the markets that we serve. It's going to be available beta in July the NVIDIA GPU cloud platform, OK? For all of you who are, who are anxious to burst into the cloud, this is the way to do it. <laughs>